Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some Wheels of Vengeance spoilers, the rotation news, the entire set list for Notorious and their sculpts, as well as what do we call these new double bases? This is episode 479. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant of deadpan humor. Over oh, they, uh, six people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. I'm going to be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because of I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks products and singles. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order that uh, does not work, however, blah, 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 with Iconics or pre-orders. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Well, I don't know, Calder. What will those wacky whiz kids think of next? Glow-in-the-dark oh, figures. Boy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. If only I had these when I was a child. Sadly, I'm a grown man who collects plastic oh, figures. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, deep, real tone of the sadly. I'm a grown man. Sadly. I'm currently sitting in my basement with earmuffs strapped to my head, speaking in... Uh, that's my Meat Canyon impression. I don't know why I'm doing that's, that. That's just... Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, uh, one thing I do want to state uh, about the WizKid code, I don't know what all it works for and doesn't. We keep getting messages. We don't control we that. Do. Um, yeah. WizKids Heroclix is a new Facebook page. If you have Facebook... Uh, and you're running into an issue, check with them. From what we've been told, it doesn't work with Iconics and certain promotional figures. It should work with Bricks, I assume, play-at-home kits, that kind of stuff. If it's not, it straight up could just be a mistake on their end. But yeah, we don't control what it does and doesn't work with. And honestly, we were never fully briefed on like what it does. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's just like a thing to keep in mind. Honestly, at some point, they might remove that code too i don't know they might you know drop the discount code it might just be like a little a little uh stint that they're just checking to see metrics and see different stuff like that who knows right um, but yeah we we don't so while i will do my best to answer you if you guys ask us there is a much better source that you guys can ask and that's that's pretty legit that's pretty darn fair the same thing kind of happened with the cool stuff in code quite often where it's like we don't run the website i don't know <laughs> who who's who's really the best person to ask it's not us though when they were like does the code not work with xyz and it's like i don't know what settings they have their website on man i have i have zero clue it's it's yeah uh really quick i want to shout out strife 911 uh this dude was the first person if you remember a few weeks ago i said whoever leaves a review on itunes spotify podbean whatever on our podcast will get a fun little prize strifer here was the first person Ooh. to leave a review so i have no way of finding out who you are let's go off of the honor system uh so strifer you know who you are uh, was it on itunes uh, it was on itunes yeah i wonder if there is a way to edit a review, if they can edit the review and okay. so like send us a message with yeah. your name and then I, I don't know if you can, but if you can edit yeah. the review and just put like your initials or something, be super um, helpful. That would be yeah. Huge. Otherwise, yeah, we'll just have to trust have somebody. To trust. And I try, I do trust the HeroClicks community, but uh, yeah. So Strifer 911, let us know. Simeon made you happy this week, my man. Ooh, this week what made me happy was some good food. I, I made myself something a little out of the box. Uh, it was a uh, Korean barbecue beef. I was like, I'm okay. tired of making hamburger and tacos. Gotten pretty lazy with my cooking habits. Uh, for a while, I was actually like, you know, going out of my way to make more interesting meals, and then came down to where I was just, you know, I've got a pound of ground beef that's thawed, so I'll just make a hamburger or two hamburgers, or taco meat, 
just like simple stuff. Um, but I actually put in some time and effort this week and it was surprisingly good. So yeah, if, if you want, I know McConnell Lamar is listening and he's like, give me that recipe. Cause he always enjoys my food takes. Uh, <laughs> not really, but anyhow, uh, if you want a quick, uh, and dirty kind of version of what it is. So oil and pan beef gets cut into cubes or shaped into like two inch long cubes, kind of thin, uh, you're just trying to fry them on both sides, top and bottom, for about two minutes. Get a little bit brown, kind of uh, crusty kind of thing. Then you're going to throw some ginger and garlic in. Hopefully, like, the fat has rendered down so that there's a little bit of, like, an oil base in there as well, um, in addition to the oil that you added to begin with. Uh, the recipe I was looking at called for agave nectar or agave syrup, I guess, next. I don't own things like that, so I put in maple syrup. And at (laughs) first, like as soon as the maple syrup hit the pan, I was like, "Yep, that was a bad call. I'm dumb." Uh, Turned out, like (laughs) all of the like the maple flavor baked out, so it was literally just like the sugar that was left. Um, So yeah, stir stir the beef up with the uh, the garlic and the ginger, and then once that's been stirred for like a couple seconds, thirty seconds or so, you throw that syrup in there. Uh, stir that up until like that like renders down. My pan was lucky enough that the syrup didn't syrup didn't like burn, stick to it or anything. So okay. that was good there. Very nice, very nice. And then yeah, you just polish it off with a little sesame oil. Which because I like fried rice, I have plenty of sesame oil around. So toss that in there, and then I just made plain white rice and put it on top. And I uh, could have probably used a little bit of sauce on top for my taste, but honestly pretty solid it turned out really good Uh, i really enjoyed it and as soon as i was done i was like i could make a hamburger this same way because this turns out into like little candied beef chunks essentially they have like that okay uh it's the maillard reaction calder of proteins yeah so like how sugars turn like to caramel proteins also do a similar thing except because they're proteins and not sugars, it's the Maillard reaction instead of, like, the caramelization. Uh, but it's essentially a same similar thing where you get that, like, browned kind of crust. And so it's that combined with actual, like, caramelization kind of situation with the syrup. And it turned into, yeah, some really delicious little candied pieces of beef. But I was thinking I could straight up do this exact same recipe except with hamburger patties. They'd have to be, like, fairly thin. But yeah, you could do like a Korean beef hamburger and then you, I don't know what exact toppings you would do. I'm thinking, uh, fresh mozzarella slice and soy sauce. And then like, I don't, I don't know what else for like the top of it, but I think it would, I think it would work. And then, uh, instead of a normal bun, you'd have to do like non bread or something, something that doesn't take away from like the, the beef as much, but sure. That made me happy. Coming up with that idea right. to make burgers made me happy, even though um, the impotence of this whole recipe was to get away from burgers. I ended the night oh. thinking about how could I do this as a burger. So it was pretty cool. Burger brained, pretty fun. My man's yeah. my man's got that burger on the mind. Yeah, and because I was no, frying awesome. stuff in my kitchen, my dog got plenty of flavors to taste, little, like little the bits, little bits yeah, and bobs here and there. The like the stoves frying it's like popping spitting stuff out and he's like "Ooh, don't mind if i lick this off the side of the wall and lick this off the floor and lick this off the side of the oven and i'm just like boy you disgust me you you're disgusting what are you some kind of animal yeah jeez just like based on instinct and you just lick things that smell good what kind of sociopathic dog are you Saying. It's okay. Toddlers do the same. They put things in their mouth before they know what they are. It's so. true. It's very true. It's true. Gotta learn like, somehow. Mm-hmm. Yummy. <laughs> it's just about it's it's a process thing. It's just about that process, baby. But okay, right on. You know, variety, as they say, is the spice of life. So I'm glad you're adding a little little variety to your meals, to your mm-hmm. diet. That's really nice. Yeah, it was Canadian style beef because I used maple syrup. So. If right. I had used Canadian the, Korean beef, yeah, if I had used the uh, correct Korean like agave Canadian. syrup, it would have been Korean beef. But really no, Korean. it was it was Canadianized due to the maple. Uh, understandable, really. We should say it's good, good classic maple syrup. A eh? 
Uh, what made me happy this week is also slightly food related, but not not entirely. I had a real slow morning this morning. I decided to take it easy. So I just went out, drove, drove around, ended up just parking in a parking lot of like a, a little weird, I don't know, I don't even know what you call these, like kind of strip mall areas. And so I just kind of like soaked in. It was, I thought it was going to be 100 today and it ended up being just really nice and cool. So I just kind of sat in the back of the pickup bed and I was just like, yeah, this is pretty nice. Then a sweet old lady like got out of her car and was like, beautiful morning, isn't it? And I was like, you know what, it is. You know, like for a second there, I thought for some reason in my mind, I was like, someone's just going to pull up to me while I'm chilling in a public space. And they're going to be like, what are you doing? Doing that. Are you, are you loitering or something? Like that's what I was fully ready to just have to be getting a confrontation with somebody. Uh, she's like, beautiful morning, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, it, you know what? It is a beautiful morning. Yeah, it really is. She's like, well, I hope you have a great day. And I was like, I hope you have a great day. And then I saw she went and opened her faux restaurant and then began work or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to come back here around lunchtime. Get some faux. I'm going get, to gonna get some faux. And so I did. And uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have made the spice level medium. It was pretty tough for me uh, to get through it. Not gonna lie, um, but I still enjoyed it. Paid, tipped, all that jazz. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You were nice. Just your base. You're just a very nice human being, ma'am. And so felt good. Also, probably small business, more than likely. Pretty small business, I would assume. Maybe family run. Who knows? So yeah, it was just. It was just pretty fun. It was good. Drunken noodles. Fo noodles with some pork, but man, yeah, I should I should have said, give me the give me the baby little. I'm just a little baby spice level. Don't uh, me. I was ugh, I was reaching with medium. I was like ah, whew, ah, don't cry, don't cry in front of the employees. Whew, whew, whew. Yeah, I'd love a refill. I'd love a refill on the water. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but it was just it was just really fun. It was really nice. So, anyways, we have a pretty packed week this week. There's a lot. There's a lot to get into. So I'm going to let's jump into the news here. I'm going to start with the spoilers that we missed. Uncharacteristically long time. We got to see Man Thing and Howard the Duck from Wheels of Vengeance, which is super cool. And it happened like 10 days ago when we first saw these. And I really yeah. just never talked about them on the podcast. So I'm just, I'm going to jump into Howard here really quickly. I'm a big Howard the Duck fan. I, I love all of his comics. I think they're very refreshing from the normal Marvel superhero life to have some slightly wackier, less serious uh, comics. And I really enjoy him as a character. I really enjoy his trapped in the world he never made. It's kind of tough luck attitude uh you know duck with an attitude you know mess with me i mess with you howard's just a fun character he's got all the keywords you want him to have he's a team player he's got defenders animal celebrity martial artist mystical politician i will say he should have detective as he is a private eye in this latest run i but also this howard is very classic howard he's blue little fedora blue jacket and the big red uh tie so this is classic like 80s howard which i enjoy those are obviously the initial run of howard the duck is iconic and it's a ton of fun howard's got a very simple dial it feels like a howard the duck dial i will say it feels like it's missing a little bit of fun and flavor but also it is like a common like it's set zero five i also love that howard's a common um he's been a rare in the past and he was like always a rare so i like that this tiny little sculpt isn't a rare and this is a common feels a little bit better i guess in my mind so besides team player and his nice keywords that give him some flavor he has quack shots which is top tier pun let's be real it's amazing ranged combat expert and then probability control but only the target himself he's got some stealth top dial stealth and perplex so he's going to be an 11 for 2 with precision strike and maybe he can perplex up his attack to a 12 even with a with a prob shot he also does ignore he can shoot out of adjacency which is super nice for howard so he's he's blasting people i don't i can't remember when exactly howard just had a gun i guess i don't know i can't like think in my mind exactly when howard was just like ah i'm gonna shoot this guy <laughs> hey doll you know like oh, stand back bevoe i can't if i could do a donald duck i would do a donald duck impression but i can't um but yeah it's, i don't remember howard oh. just being like 
Yeah, Dang. Donald Duck's all air in the cheeks. It's, I would attempt hey. it, but I yeah, I can't. Don't yeah, want to. I, just, I don't even want. I don't want the audio of that on there. It's you know, but it's like, like Daffy, it's, where you just like have to hold your tongue out and actively <laughs> drool while you talk. It's, it's that weird, like <laughs> yeah. You know, like this weird air coming from like the cheeks, the back of your throat. Like it's very strange. Um, anyways, got a little bit of sidestep down dial, full dial of combat reflex, precision strike. It's just fun. He's got some outwit later, like four clicks long, like it's Howard the Duck. If he actually caught like a right hook on the chin from Captain America, he would be done for. You know, like he's a, he's a little duck guy. Like, you know, being real, if, if the Punisher shot him, like, yeah, he's probably dead yeah like howard the duck doesn't need to be longer than four four three wow. clicks of life realistically take me back know. to the uh gosh what run was it with punisher where he starts he pulls out like a chain gun out of the back of his like uh van and starts mowing down like mafiosos and they have a duck pond and like starts obliterating ducks and the wow. little agent that's like with him's like no frank not the ducks it's like <laughs> my kid is just yeah. like frank why why yeah and he's like because i can and how it's like just it's... in a tree taking pictures like now i've got all the proof i need to put you away frank frank castle. Castle. yeah this <laughs> this is what's going to get frank castle in prison it's yeah. this crime duck killing crime. These ducks you you're within city limits you can't hunt these ducks frank castle hey if we get uh harvey birdman get some bird law in here yeah put frank castle away I mean, do you want to talk about Man Thing, the Howard the Duck's counterpart and best yeah. buddy throughout the nexus of all realities? So, Man Thing is a super rare. He has got a unique ring. Um, he's number zero th- three eight in the set, which is fairly low for. Uh, hey. No, that's that's about super average. rare. In the thirty eight. Like, I, I don't know. In the, in the past, it always felt like forties ish. So maybe he's 50s, like the, one of the first ones, super rares, first or second. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, but also it's be a the, the weird brand new set. Twinkie Twinkie bases oh. might have a different set numbering, just like how the Giants do in those True. other sets. So they might have different set numberings. Yeah, that was it one was of the big things from Gen Con. Is continue. we found out that they're going to have um, a different sized pack because the sculpts are just the two by or geez the Twinkie base. I almost said two by one. It'd be one by two. The Twinkie base uh, figures are going to have much more dynamic sculpts, so they have to have extra packaging so that they uh, don't get all broken in a normal-sized booster. But yeah, man thing here, he's unique. He's got one point value that's 90. Um, He's got Defenders, Legion of Monsters, which is a very underutilized keyword. Do you know how many Legion of Monsters there are in modern Calder? Jeez, I mean, just a man thing. Who who well, else? Has since wheels isn't monsters? out, zero. <laughs> zero. Okay. When when this man thing comes Incredible. out, it'll be well. We haven't seen the rest of the set, but when this man thing comes out, it'll likely be like one or maybe there's more in Wheels of Vengeance. Oh, but yeah, prior more. to this, Morbius and Earth X, Man Thing and Avengers Defenders oh. War, Sheikla from Deadpool X Force, Morbius oh, again, no. the zombie Morbius from Guardians of the Galaxy. It has not been a popular keyword. Dracula Yikes. from Fear Itself, and then all the okay, way back okay. to so Amazing maybe, Spider-Man. Maybe Dracula will get a uh, we'll get a Legion, yeah. Legion of Monsters. But man, this is tough. This is a tough keyword. A little, Amazing little Spider-Man introduced quite a few. It was quite the sub theme in there. And then after that, it was quite a while before we got any more. So it's don't make don't make a lot of monsters <laughs> that belong to Legion here. And I feel like uh, close to a third of them are man thing <laughs> and Morbius. <laughs> Um, yeah, Legion of Monsters, another underutilized keyword, Midnight Suns, although we've actually gotten some Midnight Suns as recently as Beyond Amazing with Moon Knight, Morbius, Doctor Strange. Um, why that Morbius from Beyond Amazing didn't have, uh, the Legion of hmm. Monsters, I don't know. But yeah, then he's Just got... too busy, Morbin. Monster, too busy, Morbin. Mystical, Thunderbolts, and Warrior. So, yeah. Real name, Dr. Ted Salas. And then right. he has improved movement through elevated and blocking it's not outdoor blocking and it's not destroys blocking he just ignores blocking so it's kind of like phasing but that's just his permanent improved movement what's fun about that is his first two clicks he has phasing so 
Yeah, unless you, I mean, technically, if you gave him like running shot or like you equipped him with something to give him some sort of movement power, top dial, he wouldn't have to use phasing. But it does feel like a redundancy on the first two clicks. Later on, it changes though. So uh, we'll get into it. Uh, he has the dolphin symbol. Otherwise, he's got all standard combat values. He's not a giant or anything. He has a single trait that is, you've got another thing coming. Plasticity. When Man-Thing is damaged by an opposing character within four squares, after resolutions, you may place him adjacent to that character. Man-Thing takes a maximum of one damage from attacks, can't be healed, and can't be chosen for Mastermind. Protected Pulse Wave. So he is only six clicks long for 90 points, but he does have the fact that he can only take a max of one damage from attacks and that's protected pulse wave so uh you could still things that get around this are like exodus where he just deals you four um thing anything that says like you know like uh oscar lock like those kind of things we've talked about these kind of things before on the podcast but there are things that aren't damaged from attacks and come in multiples it's just usually we're used to things that aren't attacks only dealing one like mystics poison that kind of thing Mm, right uh so yeah there are ways to deal him more than one damage at a time but for the most part he is going to be a slog to get through his dial because he is six clicks long with that trait um he also has the defender's team ability so his first two clicks he's got phasing teleport with 8 speed and 7 speed, dolphin symbol, like I said. He's got a 12 attack with exploit and poison, 3 damage on those first 2 clicks. Uh, 12 attack goes to an 11 attack on click 2, and then his 17 invulnerability he keeps for the first 2 clicks. So, pretty decent reducer, and then even if they are hitting him, they have to deal at least 3, and then if they deal any more, he's still only taking 1. You hit him with a crit hit hmm. and uh, six blades roll. He's taken one. It's pretty cool. On click three, his dial shifts up, so he gets sidestep now. He gets 18 defense with toughness. He keeps that three damage with exploit on that third click. But most importantly, he gets his special attack power, which is burn at the touch. Poison, when yes. Man Thing uses it, he instead deals damage equal to his click number rounded up. So on hmm. click three, Three, which is the first that's, time he has that. That's a that's a uh, two. Yeah, well, it says equal to his click number rounded up. Wouldn't that be four? It's not half. Yeah, it says equal to. Well, I mean, that's where I'm reading it. Maybe I need to pull up the actual image on the card because that does seem, <laughs> that does seem quite <laughs> wild. If uh, poison, when wow. Mantha uses it, he instead deals damage equal to half his click number. Oh, it's half his click number half rounded click, up. Half so his click half of three. Up. Okay. Yeah, it goes to That's... two. Ah. Um, <laughs> so, still dealing uh, two damage on click three, and then potentially up to like three damage on clicks five and six. Not terrible. Not like anything we haven't seen from a man thing before. I really like those poison pieces that deal extra damage in certain ways. So he has that special attack power. Um, on click four, he goes to uh, Battle Fury for the rest of his dial. Stays stays with three damage on clicks three and four, and then goes to four damage on clicks five and six. And again, like he's going to hit most of these clicks because he's taking a max of one damage from attack. So you'll get to utilize the majority of his dial, which is pretty cool. And maybe the least dangerous portion of his dial is like click two so if i was dealing like if i was facing off against this guy i might hit him once and then just leave him and ignore him because i don't want to get poisoned for a bunch of damage and i especially don't want his uh bottom dial where he's like an 11 for four and a 12 for four uh so his bottom dial his last two clicks he goes to a 19 defense on five and six with toughness and then when this click is revealed after resolutions generate a water terrain marker in his square so since he has the dolphin symbol he'll be a little protected from range because of that and then yeah he's got an 11 for 4 with battle fury and then a 12 for 4 with battle fury with that special attack power i really like this one i don't think it's as um iconic to me as the adw like one adw adw yeah that one was just 
such a good design. And granted, this guy's 35 points cheaper. They both have their place. I also really liked the Amazing Spider-Man Rare, who obviously was like had like a much higher point value. But um, his thing was poison, and then he rolled a d6 to see how much they took, which was pretty dope. But um, it's cool. No, other than but he was insane. Yeah, that ASM one was just like 300 points. I think he's like 300, 200, or 100, which is like yikes, not yeah. worth it anymore. No. Because you had to play him at, like, I think 200 was the minimum to have that special attack power. Yeah, it's got that cool um, ability, yeah. I th- I don't know, because in the, in the 1v1 kind of world, this one might be the better option just because he's dealing a lot of, like, he's dealing a lot of damage, taking a lot of damage, and really, like, the other ones, the ADW one, Avengers Defenders War one, doesn't have a special poison, uh, even though the... ASM one has a special poison. He doesn't have any way to like reduce penetrating damage, so kind of just depends on certain situations. This one might be a new iconic one. Also, we do get a uh, a little bit of a glimpse of the gosh, the sculpt, because it's halfway on the card, and it looks pretty cool. He is a big, swampy yeah. monster. His legs are half in, half out of like some mud, so it's like, you know, mostly torso up. It's like upper thigh all the way up. And he's like kind of crouched, um, just doing like a man thing pose. But it, it looks like it's heavily detailed from the digital rendering on the card. I really like it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how sold I am on this guy, but I, I'm i getting more sold on the set. If this is one of the single base I know, right? super rares, then big. maybe like, we've got some really other cool ones. Big. I, don't know. I like it a lot. I hope this means he's just definitely. Huge, uh, he just looks thick. He looks thick, man. Immortal Hulk kind of vibes for the sculpt. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, taking up a big sure. portion of the base. Yeah, yeah. I like him. I'm but... excited. I'm excited for him. Yeah. He can carry Howard. Howard's tiny. That's cute. That's fun. Yeah. I like. I like and that. Who knows? Like Maybe that. we'll even get the old uh, Howard Man Thing uh, combo. <sighs> That would be so cool. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. Or, I mean, I guess new, that could be like new, a legacy pick too. New one or a legacy one would be so. That would be so baller. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. I always oh. hated that they, like, individually they had more keywords than they had combined. And I always hated that about Yeah, that, that was figure. weird. That was, yeah, it was always strange. Super weird, but very cool, super rare, very cool sculpt. Um, yeah. I can't wait till we see more Wheels of Vengeance, but also uh, we're not even halfway through notorious DC yet. Notorious. We yeah. don't have all of the uncommons or most of the, well, we got quite a few rares, but we don't have most of like the super rares. Um, probably, I think we're missing, or we only have two chases. So we're missing yes, almost we have all the chases except Superman. two. Superman. Yeah. So, speaking of Notorious... Which, I, I won't lie. I feel bad. I don't feel bad for DC fans because this set is awesome. I, I'm, what I'm going to say makes me feel a little bad toward the DC fans, but literally, I'm so much more excited for Wheels. I kind of just want Wheels to come out. I, well, like, I want Notorious to be over so that Wheels can happen. That's not me being a DC hater. <laughs> just like Wheels looks so promising with all the new cool, like, freaking Twinkie base figures, all the vehicles, yeah. all the, like, cool characters. But speaking of Notorious, we get to see a set list of. Uh, with all the images, uh, with all the sculpts for all these people. So I would just say some some of note that look really, really cool. I really like Penguin with his big open umbrella, dual wielding umbrellas here, big open umbrella, and then green gas smoke coming out of the other one. Yeah. As well as it's a big Aquaman. Effect. Aquaman on the undead seahorse. Oh, yeah. The, that is freaking The undead seahorse cool. where it's like decayed looking yeah um that is gnarly yeah we see robin king which i thought that was from like dark knight's metal i don't i guess i don't know if he's a chase but he is right next to where the chase he's coming let's see batman one One, two two, three three, four four, five six one two three four well nah he's not a chase we have 12 of the black lanterns and the zombies and then are 13 they, is... They're, Zoggers like, mixed and, and matched. 
So the, uh, the Deceased yeah, and Black Lanterns like, aren't like in sequential order. It's not like all the Black really Lanterns weird. and all the Deceased. Yeah, because I think Secret Six was that way. This one's huh. like zombie bat or like yeah black lantern batman black lantern wonder woman no nah, i think it's mostly we black do get to see together and then deceased no it's uh, like it's all black lanterns then it's deceased i think is if it that's superman One, two, yeah three four batman superman five. wonder woman aquaman oh okay i it's just not thought even i thought split, batman was oh okay i thought the yeah. first batman was the deceased one but I see. No, DC's is the funny, the one crouchy, in, scuba gear Batman. He's in uh, Mr. Freeze's suit. He has to lower his oh, that, body oh, temperature that oh. so that the virus doesn't spread as fast. Yeah. He's already... It did not dead. work. And didn't the work. only oh, thing he managed sense. to accomplish was, like, he gave the Justice League a bunch of, like, orders that probably worked for a little while, but, I mean, eventually they did classic, not. Classic zombie apocalypse type scenario here. Yeah. Did it work out? Yeah, we, oh, we well. do see. We did see Poison Ivy's dial, right? That was posted somewhere. We did. Yeah, we did see so Poison Ivy's dial. That's a new one, and she's also it's deceased version of Poison Ivy too, which what was it? Oh, exciting cool. because uh, nice. I thought it was just going to be the chases, hmm. and there's a lot of key players that are way more interesting in my opinion. Um, although the one that we saw isn't the oh, there's two this, Poison uh, Ivies. There must be a rare and a super rare. So the super rare one is the one that's the deceased one. And yeah, she has like the growing the Gotham jungle. Um, oh, sure. Which yeah, is like a, a way to score a victory whatever, points. An animated, an animated series and a, a normal like, yeah. comic one. So victory points are just points. That's what we just call points. Victory points are what you score when you KO a character. They're not mission points. It's very confusing because... A lot of things keep saying victory points nowadays. Uh, we saw the assassin trait, and we see this uh, this poison ivy says uh, for all characters with this trait, when one or more opposing or one or more opposing terrain markers are destroyed after resolution, score five victory points and generate a plant hindering terrain marker into a square of the destroyed terrain. This game that marker has when this marker hinders line of fire characters instead modify defense plus two so it's the wakakanda map effect um but it is cool. it's interesting because this trait has no range or line of fire if your opponent puts up a barrier and you snipe it from across the map you're now up five points uh Ooh. kind of interesting to me because does this change like the barrier gameplay you know if i'm playing well, assuming they're not doing stop sign, if I'm playing like uh, a Hulk or Luke Cage or something, and I'm just running through your barrier, uh, you're gonna stop putting up barrier because I'm gonna. It is um, when one or more opposing terrain markers are destroyed, score five. So I assume if you ran through multiple, it would still just be five, but it doesn't say. I don't know. It just says for all characters with this trait. When one or more opposing terrain markers are destroyed, after resolution, score five victory points and generate a plant hindering terrain marker. So it checks uh, for destru destruction, and then after resolutions, you score five. So yeah, if you had like sidestep with improved movement destroys blocking, and then you do you like sidestep destroy it, and then move destroy it, you got ten points there. Uh, it would take like multiple moves or multiple shots or whatever you want to call it. Um, because you have to let actions resolve. You can't just rack them up real quick. But yeah, it's a cool Poison Ivy. Um, I do kind of wish it was different, but I'm also cool with it, just because how, how do you design a character that uh, makes a giant like jungle to protect people, you know? Yeah. I think it's an interesting way. She's kind of like a background character. After she makes the Gotham jungle, she's kind of just like... You know, people bring survivors to the jungle, and she's like, yeah, yeah, here are the rules, human. You are not plant. I don't like you. That's, like, a lot of her attitude, so I don't know. I'm just hopeful that yeah. we, because uh, based on her sculpt, I wouldn't know that she was from Deceased, so maybe there's a few other Deceased characters that snuck in. It's probably doubtful, but maybe. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I don't... If I've read... If I would have read that storyline, I probably would have been like, oh, maybe this person is deceased. But I, I have no... I got zero clue. I got no yeah. idea. Whatsoever. I don't know. So. Stryker? Sty Styer? And maybe. Talon. Who maybe. are those two? 
Allen is well. Talon is hundred percent. That's Court my guy, Court of Owls. Yeah, it's Court of Owls guy. I don't know what the other one is. The, he's like the main Court of There's Owls guy. Two maybe. racial ghouls they show. How so. extra is that sculpt, by the way? Yeah, for him. Like, like, I get it. He's like one of the main big bads of the DC universe that Batman has to fight a bunch of times. But like, man, that's a super extra sculpt, especially when he's next to like Lincoln March, who's like a dude. Yeah, and then Dead <laughs> and Deadshot, who's like a dude, <laughs> and it's like, oh man. He's like exploding really? out of the Lazarus pit or something. Yeah, that's what it looks like, I guess. Um, we do see. Really, it's really I extra. think we Scott already pulled the Mirror Master. I don't remember, but uh, I believe he did. The Mirror Master is kind of an interesting sculpt. We've had a few versions of him from just like them printing him on like a flat two yeah. by or like not two by, uh, them printing him on like a flat two D kind of surface. Yes, and then that was like, funny. Where he's where just he's, like a sticker. Almost. Yeah, he was just hilarious. yeah. Uh, maybe we. I do. Seen I him. do like the overall cartoony feel here of Mister Freeze, Gorilla God, Lex Luthor, the Scarecrow. It's very, very Legion of Doom cartoon, Hanna Barbera looking sculpts. So I like that a lot. They're very, they're very oh, cartoony, big proportions. I, so I'm excited for those. Really excited uh, for those. No, Mirror Master is definitely not the deceased version. It just says no. he's got duplicates, super senses when he uses ah. it and succeeds, makes more of himself. So that's not, that's not the deceased version. Uh, no, it is cool seeing the full set list. I think the chases are definitely going to be one of the biggest selling points for people. But one of the things I'm most excited for is how much Notorious on its own is going to shake up Pulp. It won't be legal for Worlds, but man, it adds a ton of utility. And just the goons and goon trait alone, the fact that you don't have to use sideline space, you can essentially, depending on your roles, if you get lucky, you can essentially have a swappable, like, do I need support? Do I need... Uh, pulse wave do i need um terrain markers like what do i need in this situation and the different goons definitely provide utility there and then uh stuff like the omac that we saw where he's 30 points i think um he won't work specifically in pulp because of highlander or no he's 25 points i'm not thinking of omac i'm thinking of manhunter right I don't know. One of them is like 30 I points and then remember. you play three of them and you get the fourth for free. It's like the instant rebate. Yeah, that's the Manhunter. So I don't think that unless they add like some sort of specific text in where he's allowed, he would break the normal Highlander rule because you'd have to play three main force and you get one for free without paying its cost. But Omac is really interesting. He's 25 points, starts on his last click and then can heal five clicks up. And he does that whenever another friendly character is K. Uh, yeah, whenever another friendly one is KO'd. But it has to be another one of the OMAX 019As gets KO'd. So I don't think he'll be playable in Pulp, but he is a really interesting like Pulp dial if he could play him somehow. And then, yeah, just like, even the... Uh, Zero zero one Lex Luthor handing out Superman enemy. That's pretty neat. Like that actually might be able to be abusable. Like I know when yeah. I first saw that dial, I was like, "Man, this is so lame." But you now play, I'm like, you know you what? Play, that uh, might actually be kind of dumb. A couple goons, a couple bystander generators. Bystanders are always going to be lower points than anyone else. So, got a bunch of outwits. How prevalent is that going to be in pulp? Who knows? Um, I think right now we're looking at a kind of meta where. It's either pulse wave or be pulse waved. Uh, there's like the the pulse wave that's anti sinister kind of stuff with it. The whole sinister Scarlet Witch combo make you crit miss just kind of requires you to have pulse wave on your team. Which we did a video at the very beginning of Pulp where we talked about how pulse wave will probably be necessary in this format. But um, yeah, I think outwit with enough range is also highly sought after. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I will say there's not a ton of cosmic energy in Pulp. Obviously, the only thing that comes to mind right now is Blue Marvel, who is a very important Pulse Wave piece. But besides that, 
I think being able to just pick them all out, just gives like, nope, can't use that, can't use that, can't use that, can't use that. And it's like, oh, like, so what can I do? And it's like, well, basically almost uh, nothing. <laughs> could really, could really hurt them. So we'll see yeah. how, how Honestly, strong Outwit ends up being. I would consider playing Necron and Pulp at his 40 point line. Ooh. He has uh, Steel Necron Energy, and... may use it with closer range. When an opposing character is KO'd, after resolutions, heal a friendly character with the Black Lantern Core key- keyword two clicks. And then he has the whole free generate a grave hindering train marker with right. a rain and line of fire. So you put one under him, like turn one. Um, friendly characters with the Black Lantern keyword can occupying or adjacent to a friendly grave marker may heal past their starting lines if healed by a character with the Black Lantern poor keyword. So he stands in one. You just literally just put him in your starting area. Just, just post it up there. Opposing character gets KO'd because you're playing with the rest of your 260 points, right? And right. then he just starts like healing. And yeah, so if he heals from 40 points, two clicks, now he's sidestep blades, exploit. Uh, if he heals two more, then he is... I th- let's see... Yeah, if he heals two more, then he's seven range, twelve attack, psychic blast, four damage with exploit. So, I don't know. I think that's a fa- fairly solid uh, forty point investment. If you, the rest of your team is able to KO two opposing characters, because the only setup it requires is him to use his free action and then not move away from that grave terrain marker. And then, yeah, if your opponent has bystanders or if they have. Um, some goons or like whatever easy to KO things suddenly this Necron could be at his 125 point dial super easy that is true I guess dang imagine playing a pulp and then like ugh, have an entire team just basically yeah. like it's prime not like Hulk, he's doing nothing pulp, cause... like harder prime Hulk and pulp but still like ugh. steel energy but may use it with closer range he has seven yeah. range he's giant so if he's outdoors and he's just posted up if your opponent comes to you, he can also just start blasting at him and, you know, doesn't have to deal a ton of damage if he just deals some damage. He's also mm. healing from that. At okay. least the way I read it. Friendly characters with Black Lantern keyword occupying or adjacent to a friendly grave terrain marker may heal past their starting lines if healed by a character with the Black Lantern core keyword. I would assume so their own abilities would he has, work. Yeah, he has that. He's friendly to That's himself. Healing him. yeah. He's in a grave terrain marker. Yeah, I don't know why it, seems why it wouldn't work right. that way. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Dang. Yeah, I'm just excited. That's I think uh, I'm excited for wheels for sure, just because the sculpts that we've seen have been immaculate. They've been awesome. Um, but I'm extremely excited for Notorious to come out to see what it does to Pulp, because that's where where I've been living the last couple months. Yeah. Been living, been living in my pulp complex, my uh, pulpment. <laughs> yeah, love it, love Got it. Got orange, living in a glass of orange juice, dial. baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all living that up pulp here. life. Before we get off the DC train, WizKids just posted this not so like an hour ago as of recording this, but. We got some info about the new Royal Flush Gang event that's going to be happening here pretty soon. So it kind of details out the prizing structure and a few other things. So really quickly, for retailers, as participating store in the program, you'll need to register your store at the WizKids Info Network. Yay, the win. If you haven't already registered, blah, 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 make sure to visit Create New Store Account. Anyways, once your store is registered on the win, you can schedule your DC HeroCooks Royal Flush Gang Storyline OP event using the official template, blah, 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 blah. All sorts of fun, right? The initial blurb says the Royal Flush Gang will return to Gotham, raising their reputation as the highest stakes criminals in town. Ha ha, get it. Follow the HeroClick storyline OP somewhere it's never gone before. The future. We are all in. And I hate, and man, don't want to be that guy. Nerd pushes up glasses. Um, actually, we have gone to the future before in the HeroClick storyline OP. We had Days of Future Past, which was very much <laughs> the future. But I No, I no, just, that I felt, was Days of I felt, Future Past. Oh, okay. It's like good. when they went back to the greasy, future. Even thinking about they were that, already like, in the future so they were going to a present oh, time okay. that was further forward so than their normal present time 
Yeah. Also, that was Marvel. Okay. So this DC, so it's, it's oh, that's true. <laughs> really different. Uh, I didn't even so think about the that. The recommended but yeah, that's true. format, uh, very simply, the recommended format is just a battle royal. Yeah. So okay, uh, each kit supports eight players with extra flex flex elements. Each kit contains participation prizes. It's nine of each. So each of these I read, you get nine of them. So Which, that's eight players. That reads with, to me that's as right. So the flex is not necessarily, it's, but that reads to me as like the judge gets automatically gets one of each. That's how I read it as well. Um, but yeah, so participation prizes and bystander tokens. Okay, maybe this is worth saying. You get nine, ten bystander tokens. It's the the dude's name is ten. Yeah, you get his bystander token. You get jack bystander tokens, queen bystander tokens, king bystander tokens, and ace bystander tokens oh, nine no. of all of those yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and then the competitive prizes so for how well you place right yeah so this will be um, first second maybe um fellowship so there's like maybe there's judge, five of these depending on know. how you yeah. want to do it so uh these are all again you get four of each of these so Right, it's for eight players, top four maybe. I don't know how you want to do it, but you get a ten figure with a corresponding card. You get a jack figure with a corresponding character card. You get a queen figure with a corresponding card. You get a king figure, and then you get the ace grand prize figure with a card, which very fun. So ace is the grand prize at the end of so yeah the month. I get the week. the figure that it's like you played this week. Whoever scored highest this week gets you know. 10 gets jack gets queen the grand prize figure has usually only been like two so having four yeah. of those is kind of odd to me so it's like maybe the person that wins that week the person that wins overall um again like a fellowship or judge option there's a lot of ways to split four of like like for winners you could also just do top four overall or however you want to split so it. I will say we'll we'll learn more about that in participation and more information oh. here. Uh, we also get four two by two hero clicks maps, so there's the the average new map size going forward. So in the participation, it reads the Royal Flush Gang from Batman Beyond are some of the most recognizable villains of the visual stunning animated series. For the first time ever, you can collect the entire gang in hero clicks. Every week, players will earn a participation prize beginning with ten in week one and concluding with king in week four. So see how we have. Four grand prizes each one, but it's only supposed to be four weeks long. What? Well, I'm sorry, we have five grand prizes, but it's only four weeks long. What is happening? Anyways, concluding with King in week four. Players who attend all four weeks earn an additional participation prize of Ace in the fourth week. And then each week, stores will award a prize to the winning players, beginning with 10 in week one, concluding with King in week four. And <clears throat> the players who have the best record across all four weeks... Those are the ones that earn the ace grand prize. So ace is not merely the prize for the final week. You get ace if you showed up to each week and you're in the top four of people that did well each week, if that makes sense. So it's still mm. like, oh, wow, we're still giving out four grand prizes, which is really good. But yeah, that's how it's, that's how it's going to be. Very fun, very interesting. I like the idea. It's like, boom, quick, four week. We got one month of royal flush gang hitting the casino hitting the hitting the tables and then it's real fast easy peasy lemon squeezy i like it yeah also no talk of uh, uh seal product so no set i was goes gonna with say this. there's no custom boosters there's no custom gravity feed just for these guys which I, i'm just fine with after excess swords yeah. i didn't play in a lot of excess swords until nationals uh at gen con i finally played in some excess swords um I'm fine with it not being a full set as long as they like go back to full set ones occasionally. I don't want, I don't think they should burn people out on them, but um, I do like them occasionally. And then also like, I don't, did they give us a date for this? There is not a date. Not on this. I don't, but... it's not mentioned here. It does say, it does simply say coming soon. Yeah. I want to say in the, whatever it's called, solicits, it's set for September. I could see I this coming in like that. right after Worlds. Yeah. Um, and if Go that's the case, then Notorious yeah, you'll have sense. Notorious, which would be like the obvious play with this. It'll not only be the newest set, it'll also be a DC set that is 
like Batman villain themed to fit with this like Batman Beyond villain theme kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the sense. only sculpt they haven't shown us is Ace, right? He's like the big Isn't Ace android the real one. big guy with the yeah, yeah. Ace on like his all chest of these guys are gonna, they have like weird so powers great. or something. Uh and robot then robot man. Yeah, like because it's like a a show geared towards like younger audiences, Batman Beyond old Terry was like love interest with some random chick who's like, Oh, what's that? She's actually ten of the Royal Flush King. <laughs> and uh it's like No they introduced my girlfriend a new is character literally in mid. this episode no. and then also a new villain. I wonder why. <laughs> and then it's always just Ah, that character is wow. the new villain. How Who could I have been fooled? There's so many shows like that where I'm like, I would just be so leery of anyone. Some guy at the gas station's like, hey, let me hold this door from you. I'm like, oh, who are you going to be? What kind of villainous cur are you going to impose on my life? Um, Why were you introduced to my life this episode? And yeah. he's like, what are you talking about, you psycho? And Especially like, it's like, what, oh, I met the new girl that transferred into my school and then I oh. battled this like family of supervillains later that night. Oh, no it's way. like maybe. I mean, by all. I like that this is literally Jake Long, American Dragon, is what we've just yeah. Out. There's like, there's <laughs> no reason why you should put two and two together. But after like the twelfth time it's happened, Terry, maybe just start like, I don't know, be like Bruce, look into this new girl who transferred in my school, and he's like, ah, yes, her parents are criminals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember where oh, I was going boy. with that. Oh yeah, Ace. Yeah, uh, they're all normal humans with like some sort of ability, or like their weapons give them an ability. And then Ace is like an actual android, like a big old robot. Looks like a Mazo or whatever. Very fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they do. I like that we get bystanders of each person. Kind of curious if the bystander back is like a suit the suit symbol on the back of their bystander Ooh, if the bystanders yeah. don't have like if they don't have any text you know what i mean like or maybe even if they do have text it's like a little, little the bubble within is is some diamonds or hearts or clubs or spades or whatever that'd be kind of fun i will say know? so absolutely hate that it's not a full set of bystanders it's yeah. five so I, if i want to use them as action tokens i have to double up on one no one Although wants I'm to not play gonna lie. two space gems as by or as uh, action tokens. I understand that the action action token has just been six for forever, but like I use for most of my teams more than even seal. I use more than six. I usually use two sets of action tokens. Yeah, when it's I always two sets Euro of six Quick. for me. Yeah, two sets of six. Yeah, so even if like, I don't you know, use six. all six, like yeah. So I I'm actually think out. owning two of each of these ones ten. That's probably fine as far as a, a for a set of action tokens goes. Yeah. Not too I agree. bad. As so, judge for the, we'll, the local we'll venue, I'll be keeping all nine of each of these. Oh, fair and just enough. Lying to the players oh, about that's, them. That's fair. Oh no, we that's didn't get bystanders idea. this week. Oh man, I can't believe they did it again, guys, but we didn't get bystanders. Oh, what's that? No yeah. maps either. No. Even though I let you play maps. on them, I don't no know. No map. Simeon, <laughs> please be reasonable, please. No. Uh I do think this set will be awesome. I think from what we've seen from Notorious, which arguably isn't a lot, it looks to be a pretty balanced set. My only fear is that like you'll end up with four commons that add up to either you playing them at 50 point line for like the the big goon or mm. you'll have like five <laughs> commons and that's 75 points of lower dial goon. Too much fun. Yeah. Way too much fun. <laughs> But yeah, I'm curious. I hope it's a good, I hope it's a good battle royale set. It looks like it. It looks like it's gonna be. If Kite Man is your super rare, you better pull off some good stuff. Be able to do that big charge and a BR. Oh be pretty yeah, fun. be good chances of doing that. Too. Honestly, hope he doesn't get dusted right away though. It'd be tough. Forty and Thunder isn't a bad and sealed. It's not a no? bad choice for a fifty point dial if like you don't have a whole lot of other stuff yeah. going on because. That you just, end up yeah, being a, a lot of sense. yeah. You you end up being like a twelve pulse wave, or you this can kind boost of your solves the little. problem to where like oh man, it feels terrible to pull like I pulled a cuckoo in X of Swords, and I'm like oh, I mean she's awesome. I get prob now in a BR, but this is one of my figures is a fifteen point thing that can can't do anything. 
you know, but instead of just these generics being a 25 point thing that are just really easy to kill, they now have a more usable 50 point line. You're not doing that constructed, but in a BR, yeah, go nuts, you know, so it's cool. I think it works out. And uh, when they're KO'd, you can generate them. That is also true. Like, they have yeah, wonky, you can, they have you can wonky pull from your effects. KO area to generate things. So, Ooh. like that. Pretty cool. All right. That is the Royal Flush Gang OP coming soon ish. Now, let's jump into the hot news for this week. That is Modern Age Rotation. So, they had mentioned before that because we're not going to wait until After Worlds to rotate, which is tough. Um, but that's because they wanted to do a more harsh rotation. I'm not going to lie. This is right on the verge of it being harsh to where I was like, oh, I mean, that's harsh. But like, if you're going to go that far, might as well have getting the other guy in there, too. That's how I felt about it, at least. But let me tell you, the listener, yeah. what sets I, have been rotated. I almost agree with that. Yeah. Uh, so five figure booster sets. Fantastic Four. Spider-Man of Venom. Absolute Carnage. House of X. Fantastic Four. Future Foundation. Wonder Woman, 80th, X-Men Rise and Fall, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Empire, War of the Realms, and Disney Plus. It stops yeah. at Disney Plus. I feel Plus. like <laughs> half of those we were expecting. So Wonder oh, Woman, yeah. 80th, Rise of Fall, probably for sure. Obviously, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man and Venom, House of X. House of X came out, uh, I want to say, gosh, dude. When did House, House of X so, out? Like January of 2021. Yeah. House of X finally fully released. So December of 2020, January 2021, full release. Yeah, we have we have sets from 2020 still in modern, and it's 2023. Yeah. So like some of these Fantastic sets they gave is like, a little extra Grr. time because obviously they never got to be played so, in like so you, a physical venue. Yeah, that's why like Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and Venom and House of X are or whatever out because they they wanted to leave those in because those came out like peak Despotellus times or whatever, right. right? That summer to fall ratio. So like that's why those ones were still left in. Not that anything besides some equipment is being played from basically any of those sets, but still, you know, I guess, man, Alia Gregor, she's still holding it down. I'm going to say some, some pulp stuff. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Especially Spider-Man Venom, like with the uh, autonomous... Oh man, Pulp yeah. pieces. That's so wild. Gosh. But no, I think I think the harsh point is being like we kind of figured if it were a normal rotation, they would have left in like I think Empire is the idea. If it was like a normal rotation. Let's War of the Realms the, was like uh, Let's look at last year's rotation. Last well last time was weird, right? Cuz they they were like we're not going to do a yeah. harsh rotation because oh, that's true. Um, of Despotellus and whatnot, so it's kind of tough for full gauging. But usually it was like that july is when rotation is so it would have been roughly two years right so, so maybe it would have been like a war of the realms stays in for a normal rotation i don't know in 2021 the modern age rotation in 2021 only took out the batman animated series secret wars battle world and earth x which secret wars and earth x i know were around in 2018 so That's they insane. also had three years at least because like they were played in 2018 worlds i think battle yeah. world was the sealed in 2018 worlds so it must have been like a september-ish release that was that was the 2021 rotation that was the 2021 rotation was those That's three wild. sets only um That's wild such a soft yeah. man baby baby soft a lot rotation. of a lot of convention exclusives got rotated in 2021 but mm. As far Actually, as five-figure sets no go, it seen. was just those three. And then in 2022, uh, let's see, the 2022 rotation, obviously, like, also a kind of weaker rotation, but it was, let's see here, 2022 five-figure sets was Rebirth, ABPI, X-Men Animated, which was the... That set came out in 2019, so yeah, also three years, three yeah, ish years, a amount of time. Captain America and the Avengers, Justice League Limited, 2020. Okay, so yeah, like we said, like obviously there was exigent cir circumstances as to why these stayed in longer, but I will say this may be the 
shortest amount of time a five-figure booster set has been modern because Disney Plus came out and officially came out June 1st of 2022 and it's already announced that it's like rotating um, it's not it's currently still modern but it only has at this point basically a month and then after that month it'll be gone so it was modern for a year and it'll be three ish months three and a half right yeah it'll be a year and three and a half ish months technically got two worlds which i won't disagree with anyone there but uh, at the same time like it does feel super weird it would feel even weirder if X of Swords and the organized play were added in there, especially since they're so offering those yeah. at Worlds this year again, like organized play right. uh, stuff. So if they I were going to rotate thing it. with like X of Swords not getting rotated is the argument of well, if it's not two Worlds, so it should be out. So in my mind, I was like, okay, so then we're going to rotate. Like this is where I wished it was a little harsher, where we rotate main set X of Swords as well no mm. but maybe that's just too few of sets but I, I would have been okay with leaving the op in you know even though that's where people are saying that's the biggest problem is yeah. apocalypse and whatnot well um, and i know i had said at some point i wish they would rotate up to batman team up just so that we get the newest maps we get figures that are designed to be pre-equipped we have like all the newest rules but if they did that it would literally just be three modern sets until Notorious comes out. And that seems insane to me. Uh, so right now, after rotation, we'll have, including Notorious, we'll technically have uh, six, oh, seven. We'll technically have seven modern sets after Worlds when rotation happens because Notorious will also be out. Um, so as much as I would like for them to have rotated X of Swords which would also have been also Avengers forever just to get up to Batman team up and leave Batman team up in for two years. I understand uh, why they couldn't or why that would just be real rough. But um, I do think that's why they pushed back the rotation till after worlds is because they wanted Disney plus to essentially get those extra like three months. Cause normally rotation would happen extra in little, yeah. June, July yeah. And yeah, if Disney Plus literally only had a year, I think people would have a much stronger argument as to being like enraged about this. I think right, already, like, mad. yeah, if you bought it heavily into Disney Plus, you had it for a year and, like I said, three ish months, three and a half ish months. Still kind of sucks. Um, it's not great. Us. We're in a yeah. weird transition time. And I'm going to say, like, I don't personally, I don't want them to keep it in. If you play at a venue that doesn't allow you to play Golden Age or Silver, um, man, open up your new, open up a different venue, find a new venue, yeah. start playing Hero Clicks there, because you can still play Disney Plus. The fact that it won't be modern literally only matters for outside like of states, like four yeah. events. Yeah. Is all modern really uh, matters, and that's kind of the biggest thing you got to tell more people during rotation is yeah. like your figures are still cool, the figures are still fun, they're just not. Modern competitive, so that's all and you care pulp, about. Sorry. So yeah, nationals, Gen Con had pulp. Um, I think ROC is doing a pulp format thing. Um, I know they're doing for sure. I don't know about pulp. I guess. Um, the yeah, theme not, I don't mean pulp at all. I meant silver. silver. So the theme, yeah, silver, yeah. Theme is silver, so that will keep Disney Plus alive and well. They had theme at uh, nationals. The ROC does Silver Age. I don't know if it's specifically theme or if it's just Silver Age in general, but there's also a theme event at Worlds. So these figures won't just drastically drop in price like they used to. At least they shouldn't. Uh, I think Sakari and Iron Man, anyone that cares about those kind of events will keep Sakari and Iron Man, which will mean that like, they're not just flooding the market like they used to. Just like how legacy figures have kind of drained like the Golden Age pools, like people aren't just selling off everyone and everything they oh, used right. to have after rotation because prior to silver age and legacy cards rotation hit and everything was worthless we have two new things that are 
basically yeah. keeping uh, old like figures. Your back, float. your back stock, and your your collections. Yeah. From instead of just being like a rotating thing, where it's like oh, buy, sell, buy, sell, whatever. Now your collections have worth, which is really cool, and it it's good for those that have those of us that are just like big into collecting stuff. That I just want to own this figure because it's fun and I like playing it, and I'll play in whatever format it's useful for. You know, and oh shoot, I like this Golden Age figure, cool sculpt, cool character, whatever it is. Might get a legacy card. That's super awesome and a good thing. That's like, hey, good on you. You bought it before it got a crazy price hike just because you like the character. Very good, you know? So it's cool. I like I like what they have in place to make your collection worth more. Yeah. Really quick to finish up, all the fast forces that went with those sets, those are all gone. Um, the the one starter set is actually just Avengers versus Masters of Evil. It's kind of funny. Uh, wow, ironically, they don't mention the Wonder Woman 80th starter set or the Empire starter set, hmm. um, which I assume is going to rotate yeah. with its five-figure booster set. But so far, they, they only have the Avengers versus Masters of Evil starter, which is a little odd. Um, anyways... Micro sets include the unpainted Fantastic Four deep cuts. Sad to see no those go. They were pretty back. funny. No more free knockback. Oh, very sad. Very sad. And then the Eternals movie. Don't miss that at all. And then the Fantastic Four OP storyline, which was basically Ooh. Lockjaw Thanos. So Animal that's takes even a big worse hit. for Canadian Nationals then. Because oh, that's it? their that's their runner up prize scene is Fantastic Ooh, Four. That's, a, a full uh, set of Fantastic Four storyline <sighs> OP. And that's it's so going to rotate, a, like, not even a couple. It's going to rotate about a month from month when they uh, Oof. win it. Oof. Oof. That's, uh, that's I really didn't realize tough. that. Probably the wildest thing, and I don't know if it really is the wildest thing, but it maybe is, is the convention exclusives and limited edition game elements that are rotating is just tire stack and it's barrel. It's insanely so, small. Yeah. So Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Howard or Deadpool the Duck from the same WKO that Tire Stack and Barrel are from are going to still be modern, which is Ass- kind of yeah, wild. Assuming they don't change this. Which was back um, in 2020. Also, a uh, big 2020 release, January of 2020, Galactus. Oh, yeah. He's well he like over August. three years into the game now. Galactus was like an August release. I want to say yeah. that he was like later 20. But yeah, like... Galactus is now still legal for that's worth kind of wild. Uh, the all the Wonder Woman th- figures, the buy it by the case Wonder Woman dudes are all still legal. Get a little more use out of your Plastic Man objects, which is nice. Um, and of course, the goat himself or themselves, Brainiac Lex. Oh, absolutely. Keep on, keep on keeping on, boys. Keep doing your thing. So that's kind of cool. And then yeah, Fulcum is there too, and Gorilla Grodd is also there. So it's it's yeah it's really wild. The Connelly is just tire stack and barrel, which it's we weren't played that much so anyways. I looked through the the 2021 and the 2022, um, the convention exclusives that were rotated for each of those was a huge list. A lot of the times it's because like they were organized play kits, so you'd have oh, sure. you know one two three well first starro and then four minions so that was a convention exclusive was starro and then like the four minions that came with him so five but like that's really just one thing um but batman power woman orion joker cock girl captain cold heat wave impulse thanos copter uh which is also the same dial as the cube powered thanos copter thanos which came with that Gwenpool, Lockjaw, Shadowcat, Daredevil, Bishop, Blacking. Like, there's a lot that rotated in 21. And then 2022, okay. Okay. again, uh, the entire Shi'ar Guard, Gladiator, Hussar, Manta, Black Dwarf, Isaac, Supergiant, Exospecs. That was like a big WKO thing, I think. Uh, Corvus Glaive, Proxima Midnight Spear. All of the rings rotated in 2022. Which. Ooh, man, that is. I'm pretty I'm sure no, I won. Like those were just released in 2019. So, oh yeah, yeah it was 2019 because um, the final ones weren't released until Nationals of 2019. And so, realistically, they yes, sort of, kind of got quote unquote three worlds. Two of them were online, but they did get three world runs before they got rotated. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that. Uh, Superman Prime was at released at Worlds, so he technically only got quote unquote two worlds before he rotated. 
Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff that got rotated. And then this year, yes, they rotated a lot of five-figure booster sets, but as far as convention exclusives go, it was just the two. So I would expect next year it's going to be massive, massive amount of convention exclusives. Probably not anything within like the last three years or the last two years, but there's just going to be a big like backlog is what I'm saying. I'm not saying like they're going to rotate way further ahead, but um, I would assume Galactus will get rotated. Uh, all of the DC stuff that we didn't see get rotated, which is like some LE figures from 2019 that I don't think were rotated even because they weren't released until 2020. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it'll be interesting. That's for sure. Um, I think my main takeaway from this rotation is a lot of people are really upset about Disney Plus and by all rights like feel free to be upset about that because you paid for this and you want it to be modern for longer at the end of the day your venue should allow for silver play and golden age play which means these figures are still viable and then every major tournament that I'm aware of has some form of silver age play so these are not going anywhere anytime soon I don't see anything from Disney Plus getting legacy carded anytime soon, but I mean, who, not. who knows, I guess. Watch watch that be Disney Plus 2's thing. Oh. All they do is just legacy well, that was, card. Like. Remember, that was the thing. We we were picking bets for uh, what was going to be legacy carded in this first Disney Plus, and then they had oh, zero true. legacy cards. Nothing. And yeah, it's also true. I hmm. think we assume, like, I, I don't know if we ever talked about it on the podcast, but we just kind of were like, that's wild and also probably due to like the mcu slash disney slash marvel not allowing the rights for previous mcu stuff see i get i get that part like it makes sense where it's like okay we can't use chris evans captain america because we didn't whatever okay it for this set we okayed it for that one blah 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 but could they have done comic like just the normal hero i don't know like no, yeah, that, like, that's where it's like have legacies. Period, is Disney you know? okay with weird. like a property that they created being mixed with a property that they aren't a part of? Like I the guess, comic yeah. version. Like mm. there's a there's a lot of like weird, it's strange, just like air about that because it it was just like so jarring after because it was War of the Realms, Avengers Forever, um, Fantastic Four storyline. I mean, obviously not the Eternals movie. X-Men Rise and Fall, Wonder Woman 80th, Future Foundation. There was literally six sets before Disney Plus that had set a precedent of legacy cards, legacy cards, legacy cards. And then Disney Plus was the first one where there was no legacy cards. Hmm. So it was just... That was weird. I mean, That's we've true. got like Thor Ragnarok. We've got the, the Avengers movie stuff. Uh, Age of Ultron stuff. Like There's plenty of MCU properties that are technically Disney now ish whatever i don't know how that works they're on disney plus though um yeah there should have been stuff that we were allowed to pull from and we just didn't get anything from it so it'll be interesting if the next weird. disney or i guess it's not disney plus it's uh next, next wave. phase next Ooh, phase no, next yeah. phase next phase next yeah uh, phasing teleport i would uh, like might not have i would like some either. team up cards right like if we can't do legacies Let's say standard mm. scenario, not even worst case scenario. Let's just say, okay, can't do legacies like last time. Sure. What about some fun team up cards? Maybe Elsa Bloodstone and was Jack Russell, the werewolf guy, werewolf by night. They should have a little team up together. You know, it should make sense. Hawkeye and Pete Pizza Bishop dog. should have a little, or yeah, Hawkeye. Well, <laughs> they have a duo. So oh, maybe, I guess maybe, but like, you know, Kate Bishop we and saw, Clint could maybe uh, have a fun team up card. We saw Madison, so she could team up with uh wong wongers wongers and that's yeah. probably it i don't think i mean she didn't really interact with many other people um what's Besides his name she hulk has a team up with everybody she defends in court well it'd be in poor taste but they could also do team ups for the first disney plus set so like mm, jimmy woo that know. can team up with a scott lang would be cool ah oh, that would be so dope um, not monica really a, rambo a that lang. has a team up with like a captain marvel would be sick i don't know if they would make the, you know because we don't really have a we don't have a mcu ant-man in no. modern right no. so would that work i don't know we could just say ant-man you could just say yeah character you named know? yeah ant-man or scott lang real name scott lang that would be a ton um, of fun. 
honestly, close up I would love to get throws. some sort of team up where it's the quote unquote like Uatu's defenders, the uh, post apocalyptic oh. Black Widow, Doctor Strange. That'd be the ultimate one. Um, that'd be so awesome. longer. Like all those yeah. I think that'd be a cool team up, put all all on a team and like opposing characters can't use cosmic energy or something. That would be so baller. That would actually be really sick. The multiverse the Guardians of the Multiverse. Yeah, I wish. I su- I so super duper wish. That's rotation. You know, it's yeah. whatever. If you know we're we're a casual podcast, so for me, I'm still gonna keep my full cur and all the Disney Plus yeah. characters that I wanted to keep. I'll probably sell Spider Man in the cloak. I don't, you know, literally only had him for the cloak, so I'm just going to get rid of him now, you know. I'd, I'd hate to be a broken record, characters. but go back a year ago from, like, today, and you'll probably hear us talking about the last rotation, and we probably say the same thing, which is, if you I play do. casually, if your venue allows it, rotation shouldn't matter to you. Like, your figures may be worth a little bit less, but if you weren't planning on selling them, if you are planning on keeping to on, like, hanging on to them to play them eventually they were going to be worth less no matter what that was yeah. just like you know a solid fact people that act surprised like oh my sakarian iron man suddenly worth less than it was like five days ago because i didn't think this like you knew it was going to rotate at some point like either hedge your bets or don't but either way like i sold my sakarian iron man last year because i just i knew at some point he's going to rotate and I don't play him enough to justify it, so that's what I'm going to do. Same with, like, the Scarlet Witch I pulled. You know, a bunch of, like, figures. I kept the Captain America chase. I kept the Ultron Infinity and Gamora, Daughter of Thanos chases, because, like, those weren't going for as much, and I knew that I'd be fine. pretty low. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to sell Captain America... Like the this the Falcon cap. He's so he's so cool. Yeah. Such a cool I love that hundred and twenty five point line. I still haven't played him at hundred and twenty five points. Even though like since he came out he's gotten better now. I haven't played him at hundred and twenty five points, but I still would rather just like have this piece for display or to like occasionally play than sell it for like fifty bucks. And that was a decision I made. That's a decision everyone should have to make for every rotation because it's a collectible game that has a modern component to it they have to sell boosters they have to keep people interested otherwise you know the only thing that would keep people buying new product is like power creep and that wouldn't be good either so it's just a it's a loss we all have to take and hopefully you can take it better than most i think silver and legacy cards have definitely made it easier but honestly i'm excited like to to go to the the meta aspect, I think I think the casual part we've people understand now. To get to like for those of you that care about the meta stuff, I'm excited for what it looks like afterward. If we take in for accounts that Notorious is gonna be legal after worlds and then Pegasus Cap is also legal after worlds, yeah. I'm very excited to see the team building. And I'm mostly excited to not see Scarab and Sky Tyrants anymore. <laughs> like they were I yeah. I geez constantly I agree hundred percent. I hate Scarab Sky Tyrant. A lot of people love Sakari and Iron Man. I hated going into a tournament and seeing it on every team. I don't think it yeah. was a, like a particularly like so oppressive figure or anything. Points. I just hated the fact that it was on every team. Yeah, I hated that's pretty how fair. just you know plug and play it was for like he's everything. Just a, he's just an easy, dumb like super good 50 points yeah i will say in defense of sakari and iron man i do think that's like the perfect like iron man tony stark dial we're like oh, oh yeah absolutely uh, a 10 10 17 2 that's like a regular dude outwit perplex willpower whatever but then it's like oh man a 12 12 19 4 that's some freaking armor right there you they know? recreated that graph. exact same that's dial such a cool and just said cool like dial. Batman with prep time tokens, like he picks up like an object and it becomes a oh, prep sure. time token. It would be it would work the exact same way in my mind, where I'm like, it makes sense, but I I hate how popular it is. I do just think that is. I really do think it's like the perfect and that's, Iron Man. That's just like, like that. Heroclix hipster thing in me, but sure. I like diverse yeah. metas, and I hate seeing like. Yes, the majority of the teams were different, but they all had Sakari and Iron Man because that's yeah. just the most. Like you basically just start with that fifty point figure. Not always, but most and sadly, of the time. uh nowadays it's just we start with okay, well of course we're gonna have Master of Evil Chases. Yeah. Yeah, you know? at least one <laughs> I was like for fifty points. Over now. uh over half 
the field at national the u.s nationals was they had mash vehicle chases somewhere on their build kind of yeah. wild um and then i think almost like four to five people were running like prime spider-man like, there was okay. there was like five we that were running well five in the top 16 that were running scarlet witch oh uh, yeah a few that were running prime spider-man masters of evil was definitely like over overblown as far as that which meant um good old mephisto was also uh being played like quite a bit i don't think mephisto was as popular as like I think he was like being ran one less or two less. Yeah, yeah. than just the chases. Yeah, but he's he's important. Oh, absolutely. He's very he very much goes in tandem with them like insanely well. Whether you play him but, uh, normally yeah. or with his a uh, team up card, either way, he's pretty oh. solid. I'm I'm excited to see the meta. It's people are worried it's going to get stale. That like apocalypse is going to run wild for some reason, I just because so. the Witch is gone. And I, yeah, I don't think that's the case at all. No. Uh, like really not at all <laughs> you know so i'm i'm curious to see everybody's creativity come on guys let's be a little creative uh the creativity post worlds also lucas's like mission point team doesn't like lose oh no loses watcher so maybe maybe that does change the viability of mission points we'll have to see the yeah maybe anyways you can always roll the big dice and try to get lucky with what's her face um doom patrol girl you know oh, that's a girl no, the other one, Crazy Jane. Is Crazy that what she, Yeah, Crazy Jane. She has yeah, she points? can. No, she can just move. So like, they're just using that watcher to, to hurt himself and then heal him. Oh, him and she can just spin like, on her. She can oh, just move her dial, dial around. Uh, yeah, there's also the only... yeah, there's also the X of Swords Wolverine that um can be like put on like a lower point clip. Oh, too, there you go. And then healed okay. up. Okay. So yeah, like yeah, there's. We lose Watcher. There's currently the most yeah, figures. consistent, I guess, but there's there's other ones to use yeah. for that strategy. Watcher was better because like he straight up picked which you like just picked just which click go. he was yeah. on. It was so easy. That was, it was yeah. just, okay. So much better just I because just, of that. Just had to do this. So yeah. But I don't know. I'm excited. I will say, you know, and I said this a lot whenever anyone would ask me, is that I really wanted tarot cards to rotate. I thought they were sort of just like a pain in the butt at Worlds last year. They were like, man, we can't keep having these things. I was hoping to just see them go. But no, they're going to be in there probably until at least next year. Uh, yeah, I would say they get one more year, which is fine. For people that it did cost a lot of money to collect all those. So that's cool. It's just not a mechanic. That I'm the most fond of, so it is what it is. I was hoping it would get the ID card treatment at the very least, if not rotating those sets. But uh, oh, guess not. Yeah, it's the X of Swords starter Wolverine has it's Battle Fury Wolverine free. If Wolverine has one or more action tokens, turn his dial to a click of your choice between eleven and seven, or seven and eleven. So yeah, you can, and then I guess an A B dial. So his starting click is seven. And then his last click is 11. So he's only uh, five clicks. Okay. But yeah, you can turn him to seven with one action. Heal token four. And, yeah, heal him four. Yeah, he can so, still do that. Yeah. And he's 40 points. So I think that's the exact same as that watcher. That's the exact same. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty so nice. You really don't lose too much if you want to run him. I will say the thing that you lose the most is that watcher is just real dope. <laughs> like it's an actually is, viable meta dope. figure as a 20 defend as TK that can go through walls out with that's got eight range through walls. This Wolverine is doing nothing for you other than like getting healed for the most part. So, um, no, yeah, I just, we knew it was coming. Uh, they, they announced that rotation was going to be after worlds, which I think anyone that was, assuming it was going to be a smaller rotation when they pushed it back was just fooling themselves. Yeah, I would have wild. actually liked to have seen it gone a little bit further. I would have liked to have seen us losing like Avengers forever as well. Um, even though that would have left all the X of sword stuff, I think Avengers forever. Is there anything major that we lose out of Avengers forever in modern? Like Kazar, Kazar, uh, whatever. Um, he gets played in some stuff. I don't think anything competitive, like meta competitive, gets played out of Avengers Forever, unless I'm no. I just no. 
I literally can't think of a single thing no. besides like blue Marvel in pulp. And then we do see some arachnite on some builds. Yeah, that's true. Arachnite. That's yeah. literally it. I mean, I know I've seen people talk I about did. iron hammer being real good. Did play agent Coulson and agent Coulson did get 11th place at nationals. So Ooh, <laughs> forgot there's about that Coulson. incredibly meta piece outside of like, yeah, I don't, um, pulp and like three ish figures i know a few people were trying something with the prime uh ant-man for a while i don't know if it ever made any headway but outside of that and then yeah some Modoc yeah, never saw stuff. play the fact that Modoc yeah, never saw when play, we I was thought like, Modoc was gonna like rule like we're like whoa Modoc makes mission points like so good so viable yeah. and then just like nah i wanted him to be so good not really I, you know i bought one kind specifically four mission point modok teams and i never got the card so i still haven't played him but uh yeah i don't i think we could have rotated past avengers forever and people would have been less upset about avengers forever than they are about disney plus yeah something i don't know avengers forever is weird i had a conversation the other day and just avengers forever instantly felt like an old set even though like i love the whole generator mechanic Something about the vibe, like this, this is no measurable thing, obviously, but like the sculpts and the vibe of that set kind of felt just a little War of Realmsy to me. Like it just felt older than it actually was. Like on release, it just felt like a 2019 set to me for some reason. Oh, I was, I was just like, like Nick something Fury about the dial shield old. Oh, that old? Okay, sure, fair enough. Where it's like to me, it just kind of felt like Rebirth. You know, I was like, there's nothing terribly interesting. There's no, like, equipment. There's no extra crazy fun stuff. It's just kind of like an okay set with neat chases. Are you kind of about how... 052 Immortus? Yeah, actually, I did. I did forget about him. You're, I'm you're actually correct. surprised. I mean, I, I shouldn't say I'm surprised. Legacy cards. Um, I will say the legacy cards for that set were dope. But besides that, it was just con- like... Congrats yeah. to Lucas for taking uh, mission points to, the like, the highest height that they've ever been with... Or- you know, getting second at nationals. Uh, congrats based. to Spencer White for originating that team, and then congrats to Lucas for dialing it in. Yeah, good job, both of you guys. Yeah, and Spencer credit, White, of course, a, a a team member of Calder's at Hero Clicks for Huntington's, and then that is right. Lucas, that is right. of course, uh, biggest claim to fame being a super fan of Dial H. So it's true, very that cool. True. That like two he's, Dial he's H connections for that mission points. Um, yeah. But no, I will say. I was about to say uh, I'm surprised Amortis isn't good enough to be on that team, and then I remembered like, oh, I'm not like, I'm not a competitive player because <laughs> Amortis is, uh, let's see, an opposing character. It's once per game, once per turn. Once so, per like, turn. It's real rough because at most you get two per turn with him. When an opposing character within range and line of fire attacks before the attack roll is made, you may guess if the attack will hit at least one target or if it will miss all targets. If you do, that attack can't be re-rolled, and after resolutions, you gain two mission points if you chose correctly. It can't be re-rolled, but he can use his beginning of the turn D6 um, replacement die on it. So if they have like a 14 attack and they're swinging on like 18s and you're like, yeah, it's going to hit, it can't be re-rolled, and then it's like, all right, I got two mission points though. Um, so it seems like a no-brainer to me. Like either they're gonna hit, and you're just like, yeah, it's gonna hit everyone, or they're gonna miss. Like maybe you'll have like a one locked in with him or something. But at the same time, it makes sense why he's not played. Looking at his dial right now and seeing that it's only two per turn. If it was able to be done multiple times per turn, maybe. But yeah. So fun, just at least like a little mini fun story about that, Amortis. In one of the BRs I played at Champion Clicks with Kevin and Isaac, some Sioux Falls locals. Kevin got that Amortis, and because a BR, like we each take a turn and no one killed his Amortis, he was able to shot call correctly, like each turn, a miss and a hit. And he actually like mm. got mission points. And we asked, Hey Judge, does Kevin win the BR? He won off mission points. I was gonna and they say, were like, yeah. There's no rules for it, so I guess not. And I was like, Kevin, this is so messed up. And then the next day they made that it. That would only take you if you won, if you got 20 mission points, you got 300 points. And I was like, okay, that's more fair. Yeah. That would only take three three full rounds because he could three get two rounds. on his turn, yeah. two on like your turn, two on the next person's turn, two on the fourth person's turn. So that's eight 
if he like if he correctly shot called each time and then he can influence that a little bit as well with prob on dial well i guess he can't prob it but um with replacement die he can shot call it a little bit better if you were just like spot on that would only be two and a half turns three turns that's pretty solid i never thought about (laughs) every turn just being yeah all three of my opponent's turns i get to to get two mission points right and that isn't that hilarious so yeah i think i think it's so funny that he actually like that was that was his mission point battle royale victory he actually we thought uh, maybe that like red x would do it in like another game that happened but like red Red x just kind of didn't because it only pops off at the beginning of your turn you get three so really when you only get three four turns in a br you're just getting like a max of like 12 maybe you know because it's only at the beginning of your turn if you if you have more people next to it than opposing it's kind of it's kind of tough it's kind of sad that's the thing uh, i think the most confusion i've ever seen in brs has been about is when you have prob on dial that means on your turn you can re-roll an attack roll or a breakaway. oh yeah on the next person's turn you can re-roll an attack or a breakaway on the next person's turn you can re-roll an attack or a breakaway on the like third or like fourth however you want to look on it person's turn you can re-roll an attack or a breakaway and then it comes back to you like you can literally every time there's a different person in control of figures you have prob again and a lot of people forget that they think it's their turn, and then like th- they have three opponents before it's their turn again. And I'm like, no, 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 that's you absolutely get prob for each opposing character. Yeah. It's a lot. It really sucks. Uh, just like rally die can really suck in brs because, uh, goodness, that that Mister yeah. Sinister rallies are rallies are miserable in brs. I think I already talked about, but yeah, having two Mister Sinisters in a BR, yikes! So many loaded ones. Too many, too many loaded ones. It's awful. But that is rotation, everybody, and basically all we got. I want to say I don't think. Oh no, wait. There's one more incredibly important thing that was plaguing the HeroClix community this week. Some people went out of their way to have to say, what are we going to call the new bases? As they are no longer crimped in the middle. No, you, you, don't gotta, you don't got to gotta, like, uh, beat around the bush. Jeremiah Peterson, how oh, dare oh, okay, you? Okay, okay, okay. How dare you? So uh, I will say, I can't remember where he started the discussion, but uh, if you don't know, Jeremiah Peterson makes uh, clicks trays. You can order them. They're custom made. Um and he recently had to redesign them because peanut bases are no longer a thing. They have moved on to Twinkie bases. Uh, so if you haven't seen the pictures, peanut bases don't have the tapered in middle anymore. Um, like the peanut base roundabouts that we had in Indiana. And so Jeremiah proposed the question. And yeah, I don't have it pulled up, but if you do, call her. I have the Brad Broyles let's all vote to decide what they're called i want to say it's just somewhere here in the same group unless unless he took it down i don't think he would have but he has this like diagram and a few other oh there it is so he was discussing his hero clicks trays with some people at the venues and telling them that the new one by two peanut base are now a different shape right conversation shifted to what they call the new bases because peanut doesn't feel right and i do agree uh, as they lost the unique shape. Now, this was just like yesterday. And for the past two weeks, we on this podcast have been calling them Twinkie Bases. Because I, number one, I think that name's awesome. Uh, number yeah. two, that's what it looks like. The, that was I, also like, so at Gen yeah. Con when we first saw them, that was the, what we That was the very first thing. Like, yeah, started calling In them. your brain, it's like, oh, that's shaped like a Twinkie. Before and we even got I back to the hotel that night, being we like discussed it. Very stereotypical American, you think of the food. Um, but I mean, Come on now. So he goes on to like do this whole s- straight sides, radius, H for height, overall length. And it's like uh, technically the shape is stadium, like a like football stadium, yeah. I guess. Would be I would, the only... I'm guessing this is like some sort of CNC kind of it like must conversion be thing. Some specific thing. Because, yeah, so he's, he's got to he's he's program out, his like laser or his uh, Dremel, his whatever machine, it is. Yeah. He's got to program it to like do certain things that's what like the whole basis of and i will say it was specifically ryan fiddler that did all the research for jeremiah here he does credit him which is nice and he says the state the shape is a stadium 
But also, and he says, so I hope all of you will now refer to it as stadium bases. Now, I want to get a few steps back here. A few weeks ago, some dude was going around saying we have to call Prime Absorber Man Pam. Pam. And, like, that's just, sorry, no offense, dude, if you listen to this, but nope. that's kind of a, a dumb name, and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to yep. do that. My mom's uh, name gonna... is Pam. I'm not referring Oof. to Absorber Man yep. as that. No, Pam's a cooking guys. spray to me. Yep. Also, technically, also... my mom. Yeah. Also, yeah, and also the lady from the office. So I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna do that. So to me, I was like, just call him EarthX Absorbing Man, EXA, EA, something. I don't care. I'd rather call him EA than Pam uh, or PAM. Like call that's just nah, not gonna happen. Like I don't know, absorbing pieces. So man. exact, yeah. But any <laughs> also like pieces, we don't man. have to hyphenate and like shorten everything. Yeah, like sometimes not everything you can just needs say, to be Switch or Saki, which also yeah, I didn't call them those Sakarian things. Anyways, those Iron were, Man. Guess what? Those were dumb names. Switch and Saki are dumb names, and I feel very confident saying that. Sorry yeah. if you liked to use them, uh, but they're very stupid names. Yeah, I so never I always used. Went out of my way to I never a used Sakarian Switch. Iron Man. Yeah, uh, I always used Warch because that was a oh very nice Witch and Scarlet mixed together. So like, yeah, it's just, just that she's a Warch. Um, no, we so, yes, we the, called him Saki Man. We didn't call him Sakarian Iron Man. Would be Sim. No one proposed true, Sim. Sim for him. No so Sim. yeah, we don't we don't do three three tiered acronyms here. Yeah, uh, it's always some culmination of words. Imagine being some loser that has three tiered acronyms instead of just like two, like a normal person. That'd be hilarious. Anyways, but the idea that like the community has to be like we're gonna name this and it's named this now and it's like nah dude just call it whatever you want and it whatever sticks sticks honestly if somebody said oh it's a stadium base i'd be like whatever like i literally don't care if you want to call it the pill the pickle whatever keep calling it the peanut like don't or really keep care. calling it the peanuts i really don't care but guess what it's not a no one takes a vote this has never happened before in Hero Clicks. We looked at the new bases and we were like, yeah, those look like Oreos to me. Those are Oreo bases. Whiz Kids, whether they like it or not, sorry guys, because you because obviously the rights to Oreo are caught up somewhere. Uh, but that's what we call your base type. Sorry, we call them Oreo bases. We call them peanut bases. Um, no one owns the right to peanut, thank goodness. But yeah, these ones look like Twinkies. So off rip, you know, me, you, Ian, we were all just like, yeah, it's Twinkie base. Looks like a Twinkie. That's the vibe. That's how things get named. I hate to tell you this, people. No one, like, for communities and random niche internet stuff, no one, like, takes a vote. What shall we call this new meme? No, it's just kind of like the vibe of what it is and then just what sticks, sticks. And uh, we scroll up to Brad Broyles is what should we call the new base, which also ridiculous to think we can still vote and whatever, but Twinkie's winning. So, like... It was going to be Twinkie anyways, because that's the vibe. It looks like a Twinkie. You know, this is kind of a non-issue. Call it what you want. Some of these are bad, though. The USB-C base is more words. More USB-C syllables. base. While I understand what you mean by that, yes, it is just straight up. I also want to, not, I really want to know who did, uh, who did horseshoe base, because they've never seen a horseshoe in their entire life. If that's what they think a horseshoe is shaped like. No, no, um, it's just two horseshoes, like, back-to-back, back, I guess. But even then, two horseshoes, they kind of crimp in the middle, so they would be closer to a peanut shape, two That's horseshoes true. put together. Yeah, they do taper um, in. Un- not... Unless they are the game of horseshoes, horseshoes, in which right. case, yes, those are straight. Yeah, because um, they were never put together yeah, used. Right. Yeah, because no horse, geez, that'd be an insane freaking horse to use those things. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, a pickle... I, I don't like pickles in meme culture. They have too much of a Rick esque feeling, and we need to forget also, that show ever existed. Please. Pickles are lumpy and like irregular shaped. These Straight are all up, be... whoever just put peanut. Sorry, we know who did. It was Lucas Tom Ben Holly. Uh, <laughs> you know, really? they're just not. Yeah, he just put peanut base. Wow, like, no, he got eleven percent. I know. Shocking. Let's shame everyone. Brandon really Shastine, shame. Oh wow. Uh, let's see. Someone else I recognize. I want to. I feel bad no, uh, just for Kyle here. Kyle took the chance to add a poll option to just point out that he's an alcoholic. Uh, Kyle, if you need help, um, please seek seek it. Um, find a local AA meeting or a therapist <laughs> or a, a self-help guide or something. If you are an alcoholic, talk to your friends and family about it. Um, don't use the Facebook poll thing on a HeroClix group <laughs> to uh, say your inner what, problem. What time was I this added? Oh. I just accidentally voted uh, for that one. 
you voted for it. I mean, yeah. so it's a good one of accidentally. Oh, so it's the best one to vote. Twenty two uh, hours ago would have put that. Twenty two hours uh, ago. Gee, seven. Oh, late into seven thirty. I guess that's Ooh, not that peak, late. Peak alcohol in time for some people. Um, the 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 Jasper Vincent one uh, says capsule base, and I think you miss what a capsule is in that. That yes, a pill shaped capsule is the shape of the base. Right. But just saying capsule, that's not the sh- the shape. A cap like it's a, a capsule is like a, a container. A capsule could be a is, ball. It's flat. Yeah, it could be a ball. A capsule is like anything that's like two little pieces technically that go together. a pokey ball is a capsule. Yeah. Right, and that's like, just a, like yeah. an orb, uh, like a pill shaped capsule or a pill so that really, is a capsule is also a pill. Thing. It's a capsule. Yes, exactly. So like, anyways, this is a, this is all so much to say. Call them whatever you want, but it looks like Twinkie is going to be the predominantly popular one, whether you like it or not. Sorry. Yeah. Also, They're Twinkies all, are delicious. I mean, yeah, it's not like WizKids is going to put it into the rules that this is what you no, have to call it. No, WizKids isn't going to be like, you have to call it a Twinkie. Yeah, specifically probably, because Twinkie is like a TM, Twinkie TM Twinkie is a hostess brand name. So just like the act of like printing that on anything, you would have to clear it with them probably. But... We will call it Twinkie Base. Other people will call it Twinkie Base. It's just like a, just like we said with Peanut, makes the most sense for a lot of people. There's a lot of reasons why no one will use Stadium Base. A lot of people pointed out smartly that it's technically the same shape as three by sixes, and you know I don't I don't remember what the Blackbird is. But it's like a. Oh, two by four. It's just a two by four. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, technically, also the same shape. We have several things that are that same exact shape. Whereas Twinkie not only denotes shape but also size. It's very much the size of it. Also, why I think like very pickle close. doesn't work. Double base, I guess, works. Peanut base would work, except like again, no longer shaped like a peanut. So, unless you're going to modify every. Twinkie base that you get, it's not going to be a peanut shape. Ah, I do like Aries, uh, his option here, grower, not shower base. No, that's maybe the worst. Just like his forehead is to grow or not a shower. Oh, massive, massive forehead. Yeah, he grows when he takes his hat off. His forehead suddenly it's becomes kind of insane. Massive. His head. <laughs> He's got a six head under there. His, his forehead goes all the way back to the back of his head. That's how big his forehead is. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if he listens to this, but I listen to his show and he constantly makes fun of me. So, oh, good. Yeah, Talks the about show him. where it starts with an instant insult to everyone listening. <laughs> what a nice hero flick show! That's my favorite. You're all ignorant, but we're not. So let's tell you how things are. <laughs> that's the intro, right? I think that's how. It yeah, is. it's something like that. It's like you don't have common sense, and we do. Which oh is not yeah, only yeah. A lie. That's what it not is. only an insult, but also a lie. Uh, <laughs> so like. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> we have some cross listenership, I'm sure. So somebody reach out to Aries, tell him how wrong he is, make him listen to this. If he doesn't laugh about it, then he'll probably just spit water on some innocent person. On somebody's, yeah, things, yeah, property. What a nice guy. To wrap up a little bit of, of news here that I forgot to mention earlier, WizKids HeroClick page did a fun little get us to a thousand followers, and then their Instagram did a fun little get us to 500 followers, and they were like, we're going to show off a new cool sculpt. And these were both from, well, I assume, because it's a lie, because one is the Avengers Premium Collection, and the other one is the X-Men Hellfire Premium Collection. So they're two different box sets, probably. Uh, I'm not going to mix and match, but maybe come out at the same time. I don't know. But one, we got to see the Avengers on Facebook. That was She-Hulk looking, geez, jacked out of her mind in hammer pants. Oh, yeah. Kind of insane. She has these little, such dainty, petite little gloves. And then just baggy pants and then heels. Some absolutely unclutched pearls. Yeah, yeah. The pearls as a waist. uh, uh, what. Not quite a belt, but just kind of a waist dangly thing yeah. that has her initials in it, the SH for She-Hulk, and then some fun glasses, and then her hair is put up in a ponytail-esque thing. And she's walking the green carpet, it looks like, in her Oh, skull. yeah. Didn't notice that, but yeah. And then on Instagram, we see Iceman, who is icy. I don't know. It's like he's just in like a tuxedo. It's not, of, yeah, it's not, not the, the craziest. Uh, gosh, um, 
It's not the Hellfire Gala Iceman that I was hoping we'd get. He's also walking like, the We green have seen, yeah, green. we have seen like other Icemans and different Hellfire Gala. It's not Gala's. really a tuxedo. It's like a leotard thing. Yeah. It's like a, an ice it's a skating onesie. uniform, really. Yeah, because it has that big quadruple almost V-neck. Collared? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, navel V-neck from, from the shoulder to the navel V-neck. It's just hands are just, yeah, in his behind his back i guess he's just kind of standing like whatever check me out it's a little side profile ice man yeah so yeah we got assuming so yeah assuming uh someone posted from these two sculpts we are looking at i believe the second hellfire gala um so yeah i i don't know how to describe all the other ones but there's like an 80s fashion icon looking rogue kind of thing gambit with like pants and like a vest that has no front to it so it's just like sleeves and a hood so that's like gambit's look there's a extremely impressive looking doom that's in like regal attire with like a huge yeah dude that's insane. shrub on his head um yeah there's all kinds of them like angel is just like has like a white or he has like white pants and then like a blue starry shawl thing slash cape with like a chain connecting it on his chest. And that's like it. It's like pants and cape and that's it. I really uh, like the Captain Britain look for Psylocke. It's oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of funny. Like kind it's of like really cool. Kind of floofy. Yeah. Kinda kind of like a Valerie. Val- uh, Valerie. Although on Valerie-ish. the other end of, of, uh, of floofy stuff, I don't like Emma Frost's giant fur yeah. coat. With just the X, she looks like the window. Bumble from uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Like, claymation. yeah, she looks kind of wild. Like there. Cornelius is about to pull all her teeth it. out. That's what she looks like. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is how she looks. Goodness. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we see Wolverine, uh, Laura Kinney, looking like she works at Hot Topic. Yeah, is that is a, a fun, very a fun look. '90s punk aesthetic for sure. I wish I could say I hadn't seen that kind of outfit before, but other than like the sheerness of the yellow, I've basically seen that exact outfit. Sans claws. Um, I would, Storm yeah, I literally would, just yeah, has like a sense. cloud attached to her, which is like cool use of mutant power. If that's yeah. what that is. Havoc is oh, like sporting his like cloud. arc reactor on his chest. All like Tony Stark yeah. style. He's just like, yeah, this is fully charged for, for aesthetics. I could literally blow a hole through your face right now for aesthetics. I don't know. I don't know how his powers work. So yeah, he just I don't know. He just likes it. I will say from like what yeah. I've seen of like the comic and the two oh, figures that they've Frost. shown. I guess Emma Frost has the big weird hat that Jean Grey had last time. Who's the chick in the white coat then? Is that just maybe another Emma Frost? I, guess I think it's. Emma and I Diamond think there's Storm three now, Emma whatever. Frosts. Are I think there's both? one with like oh gosh yeah form? she's also on the top line too. yeah yeah there's double I think that's diamond, diamond form, form with like heels and then like diamond Did form uh, change Ziggy clothes Stardust. many times what and then normal form yeah uh, the Rudolph diamond Bumble hat. lady she like killed yeah. a million okay. mink Weird. for that coat or bleached beasts worth fur it. white worth and then it. Nah, worth it. shaved him no. I don't like that, actually. I think I prefer killing a bunch of mink than bleaching beast. I don't like the idea of a shaved beast. It sounds... Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. That would be disturbing. I hope Marvel does that at some point. Just show like what Beast looks beast like. Is, Have you ever seen... They're so, doing Beast dirty enough right now, I think. By not to go him, like, full Joe Rogan. Alive. But have you seen like a bald oh, chimp? I thought you were going to ask. Have you ever done DMT called it? I'm like, no, Simeon. Yeah, have you ever had why? Elk, elk uh, have I ever seen a bald chimp? I have not seen a bald chimp, no. Well, I, I feel like that's what Beast would look like. Sim- he'd look similar to that. It's very disturbing where it's just like insanely muscly, but like the joints don't work the same as humans. So like their their forearm bends in like a slightly different place and stuff. Um, Ooh, I don't like the Okay. Yeah, but I feel like that's what feels, Beast would look like if he yeah. was like shaved. So I, I definitely feel like we should do that in comics. Weird now, yeah. Yeah. Well, shoot, I guess we'll see. But I believe that is it for news this week. We're just trucking right along with plenty of cool stuff to go into and talk about as we lead up to Worlds, guys. So get excited for that. 
going to have some really fun Worlds podcasts that you can listen to here we'll release the week of that are going to be longer style podcasts on your travels, whether it be a car ride, whether it be a flight to hopefully give you that Heroclix content you need to get to your destination. If we do have some listener questions, I did not fully prepare for them. Which, because like one was like build a team, and I'm I didn't I forgot to do that, so we're gonna we're gonna hold off till <laughs> till next week. So maybe if you want to write in some more listener questions, so we can have a bigger mailbox next week. Feel free to do so. Contact us at dialhforheroclicks at gmail dot com. Send us in some questions, whatever you want to know. Let us know. Shout out to David uh, for sending us a detective team that he built last week. That was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, guys, you want to do that? You can also join the Patreon. Go to Dial H, uh, Dial H Podcast, Patreon.com, and you can go ahead and, oh, Simeon, I hate that. Uh, <laughs> you, you can uh, you can join the Patreon, five bucks a month. You can get all sorts of cool benefits, as well as seeing exclusive videos that are only for Patreon members, as well as getting entered into monthly giveaways and playing Bad Sam for us, hanging out with us in voice chat from time to time, and even helping you build some teams for tournaments and whatnot. It's a a ton of great fun, and we're constantly told by people that it's well worth the five dollars. One of my favorite reviews is that it's worth. I get that a listener gets more out of this HeroClix Discord than a, a certain free HeroClix Discord that I won't name. So, like, that's really cool. So, yeah, go ahead and think yeah. about supporting us on Patreon. If you don't want to support us on Patreon, you can do so by just subscribing to our HeroClix YouTube channel at Dial H for HeroClix YouTube.com. You can also You'll also by subscribing on why YouTube, would you be yeah, entered in. Uh, a lot of giveaways a by lot being on our Patreon. You'll be in monthly YouTube. giveaways. Yeah. So some exclusive, some not. And yeah, the free way to help support our videos, watch our content, like, share it with your play group. If they, you think a video that we post is interesting, that they might like it, go ahead and share it with them. But yeah, guys, that's the way to go ahead and support us. Yeah. If you're a patron and uh, you're listening to this, then you will know that on Friday around... Uh, 5 50 p.m. Central Standard Time when Simeon posted a nude chimp in the Discord. Mm. Yeah, I can't it was a direct that. reference to this uh podcast and what I, I recently showed Calder. It's uh, it's just like weird because, yeah, like, like, weird, it's not like gross, it's it's just That's real weird. weird. You forget how human they look until you're like, ah. That one's not covered in fur. That just like looks like an old man walking to the bus. <laughs> I was like, this looks like my grandpa or something. Yeah, like, like if if so my grandpa strange. still worked out daily, like, but yeah, my like my dad's knuckles are like this messed up. So like he could have yeah. these weird crinkled hands. That these makes arthritis sense. wrists. We yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can <laughs> you can get primo access to these kind of images pre podcast dropping on discord yeah uh incredible and if you don't want to support us at all but you want to support those that support us you can check out coolstuffinc.com i know i just bought some board games bought some pre-releases some hero clicks from cool stuff inc and i used code dial five when i did so to save five percent off they have the newest and latest hero clicks singles and sealed products so you should check them out at coolstuffinc.com and if you want to go direct to the source and use shop.wizkids.com, you can get sealed products, you can get pre-releases, you can get play-at-home stuff, uh, obviously Iconics and whatever else your heart desires. You could use code DIALH10 to save 10% off. But again, that doesn't work on all products. It's mostly on like the sealed bricks and stuff, from what I can tell. So check them out. Use those codes helps us out somehow not sure calder hasn't told me but i'm told that it helps us somehow apparently anyways like always guys happy trails so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks no. are you serious again how many people even play this game like 100 that's how numbers work over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think i am funny I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Canada. Yes, not Canada. Now my bones are metal.